Ladies and gentlemen, the World Cup is upon us. And this means unlike 2018, the US are actually playing. Now, I would have done a separate video on the USA vs Wales match, but I kind of caught a bit of a cold while I was in New York. So that also means the match day one review of the group stages will be a tad late, and by a tad late, probably when match day three starts, I'm really sorry. But don't worry, because it'll be good, I, I promise. But without further ado, let's dive right into the US campaign so far. November 21st gave us USA vs Wales as the last match of the day. The US hadn't played in the tournament since 2014, but for Wales it was since 1958. And every USA fan was extremely terrified for what shenanigans Greg Berhalter was about to pull with this lineup. But by some surprise, he actually didn't f us over. We had Christian Pulisic, Josh Sargent, and Tim Weah as a front three, Eunice Musa, Weston McKenney, and Tyler Adams as the midfield, Serginho Dest and Anthony Robinson as fullbacks, and by the gods, my prayers have been answered. No Aaron Long. Tim Ream and Walker Zimmerman would be our center back pairing, and would I have preferred Cameron Carter Vickers over Zimmerman? Sure, but I was perfectly fine with this. So eight minutes played, we immediately go on the attack. Serginho Dest provides a beautiful ball to Tim Weah, whose cross almost leads to a Welsh own goal. But it doesn't stop there though, because just seconds later, Josh Sargent gets a good chance, which is saved by Wayne Hennessy. Things were going quite well for the US, weirdly enough, but there was one man who was trying to stop it at any given moment. The referee. Abdul Rahman Al Yassim was such a pain in the ass in this match. Within the first 15 minutes, three US players were booked, some justifiable, and others extremely soft calls. But when Welsh defender Chris Mepham pushed our commander-in-chief, nothing, just a little talking to. Th that's it. Eventually though, our boy Abdul Rahman balanced out and became a nuisance for both teams. However, 35 minutes played, President Pulisic explodes through the Welsh defense, slides it to Tim Weah, who finds the back of the net. <laughs> 1-0 United States of America. Tim, forget Ballad Doors, you have scored more World Cup goals than your father. So the half ends and we're up 1-0. You know guys, th there might actually be hope. Wales right before the half decided to bring on the aerial abilities of Kiefer Moore. And to be honest, I'm not really sure why he didn't start in the first place. But with this substitution, Wales was now opting to be more direct in attack and it was starting to pose problems for the US as Greg Berhalter again was being outperformed tactically. Then the 79th minute, Gareth Bale receives the ball in the box and Walker Zimmerman decides to crash into him. My brother in Christ, he had his back to goal. He wasn't going to score. Why did you slide into him? Legit, if Zimmerman could have just stayed on his feet, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. Or really, we could go even farther, had Greg Berhalter maybe changed up the tactics and maybe allowed the players to carry on with the momentum we had, we wouldn't be in this situation. Anyways, Gareth Bale scores, he goes wild, the red wall goes wild, and I'm depressed again. But hey, there's still time to get a winner. Oh my f- so yeah, game ends one all. I was disappointed because we were doing so well and squandered it for the 4,000th time. Now, Greg Berhalter actually addressed why his dumbass decided to sub on Jordan Morris instead of, I don't know, our most talented player, Gio Reyna. And no, it wasn't because Gio Reyna was injured. He stated, we went with Jordan, who we felt could give speed and power. Jordan Morris, in 12 minutes, had three touches and two blocked crosses speed, and power. But shout out Tim Ream, who looked brilliant, and also much love to Nico Williams, who played with an incredibly heavy heart. Five days later was the big one, the match that I and many others had been looking forward to since the draws happened. England versus the United States of America. A match embedded in history. From the 13 colony lead blown by the British in 1776, to the War of 1812, to even the famous American victory in 1950. And of course, who could forget, the one-all result in 2010 one of the greatest American victories. I truly underestimated how much attention this match would get, because once the day of the match came, Everyone I knew was talking about it, whether they were into the sport or not. Social media was a full-out toxic war like I had expected it to be. Instead of bullets and gunpowder of the past, it was now 9-11 jokes and dead queen jokes. Oh, how I love humanity. But as the minutes passed and kickoff was getting much, much closer, 
I was getting pretty nervous. England are objectively the better team here. Better quality, better talent, I mean, they win on paper. And while they have Gareth Southgate, who holds the team back, we're no better off with Greg Berhalter. England, though, would get the first good opportunity, however, Walker Zimmerman having f***ed up the last match comes up with the heroics. Then the US got a really good look on goal, however, McKenney couldn't keep a very difficult shot down. But no worries, because the American midfield continued to just absolutely boss it. Weston McKenney with a little Expelliarmus darts down the pitch and eventually finds Musa right at the top of the box. Musa then works it to the commander-in-chief who strikes the crossbar. Holy sh**. We're playing better than England. But not so fast, Maxwell. Mason the Muppet has a chance, but Matt Turner says no. At halftime, though, it was nil-nil, and that was a US performance I could truly be proud of. Southgate loves to play down to inferior competition, and the US knew this and ran at England's throats at any given moment. The question now was, could the US actually maintain this momentum and maybe even score? Or will England finally take control and end the American dream? The second half arrives, and here comes Bukayo Saka. He runs down the right flank, but uh-oh, watch out, Bufrado, it's Tyler f***ing Adams, baby. Yeah, so after this, things kind of simmered down significantly. The US were still getting some opportunities, but not as good as the ones in the first half. Also, England were starting to control the match more. However, they were still playing like a bunch of nervous black and tans running like hell from the IRA. Sure, the defense was looking great with Harry Maguire actually being like a competent defender. Actually, he was the best defender on that pitch, but the attack was lacking any kind of sting. Jack Grealish did come on in the 68th minute and did liven things up a bit. However, the US defense did pretty well to suppress his tricky efforts. But then, in the 92nd minute, England get a set piece in a dangerous position. Luke Shaw delivers a great ball and... In header wide! Jesus, I think I just pissed a little. And that does it. USA England ends in a nil-nil win for the Americans, meaning once again, the US are still undefeated against England in the World Cup. 21 Savage will remain a Brit for now at least, and as compromised between the two nations, James Corden will actually be exiled from both. He is now to be sent to Italy as punishment for not making the last two World Cups. Oh, and what's the sport gonna be called now? Well, there's actually two names you can choose from. You got Fooker or, uh, Sockball. You get to choose. Memes aside though, this was a great display against England. Many great individual performances. Matt Turner was fantastic. Tim Ream, rock in the back. Our fullbacks, they played well too. Weston McKenney was great. I just wish, I just wish he could have kept that shot down. Eunice Musa was committing friendly fire and it was a joy to watch. Christian Pulisic was also pretty decent. But my man of the match though, was Tyler Adams. N not a doubt, not a question in my mind. That man was putting in the work. Without his contributions, we'd be forced to eat beans on toast for the next four years. I do have a few criticisms though. Walker Zerman was great in defense. The one issue is he wasn't great on the ball anytime we were trying to build from the back. When we had the chance to progress forward, he always seemed to kind of be hesitant with the ball and kind of killed our momentum. Also, Greg Berhalter's subs kind of killed off the match for us. Bringing on Shaq Moore, made absolutely no sense. And while it's great that Greg Berhalter finally let Gio Reyna out of jail, he subbed him on in the 83rd minute. Tim Weah was looking pretty gassed 10 minutes before. Why didn't we just sub him on then? Also, for as much as Greg Berhalter got a lot of stuff right, in terms of his attack, it's still extremely underwhelming. And I'm just saying, if we had someone better than him, we would have won this match. Either way though, we win, nil nil, we move, Two points in the groups, and next we have Iran. The road to the last 16 is very simple. We beat them and we go through. Any other results and we pack our bags. Now we've played Iran before, back in 1998, where we lost 2-1. So hopefully we can rewrite history there. It'll be difficult though, because Iran are really good in defense. Not to mention they have two very lethal strikers up top. But hey, if we can put up a fight against England, we can definitely do that against Iran. But yeah, uh, sorry I haven't really been making videos for the World Cup. I mean, I've been trying to, I've just, uh, you know, you can hear my voice. It's not exactly normal right now. But hopefully Match Day 1 review should be out very soon.
That is at least the plan. But of course, a massive shout out to all our patrons, including Janos Balash, Sensely Hank Dennis, El Favi, Miliwe 9 Aldipu, Alex Rod, Ulta, Amin Suarez, Aresan, Daniel Ortiz, Francisco Hernandez, Eyeshadow Ninja, Juan Leras, Miguel Munoz, Nguyen Dim Min Thang, Return Fire, Rory Burns, Saw, Subscribe to Tendetem, The Murder Drive, Tomicus, Vanilla Mexican 17, Victor, Carlos Anaya, Chris Damaseno, Declan Malloy, David Dunn, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Joa Paris, Jordan Clavin, Mohamed Albokhel, MX Wee, Patrick Barley, President Pulisic, Unbroken Persona, and the Q Fam. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and up in the annotations. You can follow my Twitter if you'd like. We actually just recently hit 10k, so thank you very much for that. You can also follow my Instagram if you want, follow my TikTok, trying to get to 15,000 there, and of course, you can follow my semi-active Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.